Welcome to today's lesson and today we're going to be looking at debouncing buttons. It's a subject that comes up a lot on the various forums that I'm part of. Beginners sort of struggle with this idea. So we're going to look at what it is and how to get around it in a very simple way. So first of all the circuit. I've got a little circuit over here that we're going to be looking at. So if we just blow that up a little bit so you can see better. I've used an Arduino Uno. You could use any Arduino. Um, we have two resistors here. They are two times 10 kilo ohm resistors. I've got a button and a few wires. So on one side of this switch we have a resistor that goes to ground. The other side we have a wire that goes to pin 8. On the other side it goes via the other side of my breadboard to the 5 volts and the same is repeated on the other side except obviously this time it goes to pin 9. The uh, two resistors are there to pull the signal low so otherwise when the button isn't being pressed you'll get all sorts of weird readings. If you want to find out more about that just do some searches on the internet for how to set up buttons. This is the circuit we're going to use. You're not going to need any other components. So let's get back to our opening screen and just have a look at what we're going to do in this lesson. So debouncing buttons, first of all, one of the things, what is it? Well, debouncing buttons is needed when we have buttons that when they're pressed, keep sending a repeated on signal. Uh, in certain circumstances, it's not needed. Uh, for example, when we're using an LED, we'll see that it really isn't a problem. But if we're trying to use a switch as a counter, then it really can cause some problems. Then what I'm going to do is show you a very simple way of debouncing a button. And finally, we're going to turn that into a function. So let's get started and get straight into the IDE. So today we're going to be looking at three different sketches. The first sketch that we've got is without uh, any kind of debounce on the buttons to show you the impact of when uh, button bounce causes an issue. Quickly whizzing through the sketch, two buttons, button pins. I'm using the built-in LED. Uh, I don't tend to use the built-in um, prefix I tend to just choose the number the reason is I use other boards that have the LED on a different pin so it stops me getting into lazy habits we've set up the various pin modes obviously the buttons are going to be for inputs the LED pin is an output and then we're going into the circuit I've got an integer uh, local integer variable pressed um, so when uh, the, the loop runs round it will digital read pin 1. If it is pressed, obviously it will go high, it'll give a value of 1. So if the value of pressed is greater than 0, we're going to turn the LED on. And if the button isn't being pressed, we're going to turn the pin off, turn the LED off. Then we've got uh, button 2, and instead of it turning an LED on and off, all it's going to do is it's going to print out something to the serial monitor. And the reason for doing this is it will show you the problems that we will face. Now, if you've built the circuit, I'm not even going to bother videoing me pressing a button. But basically, if I press button one, you will see that the LED lights up. Now, if you can imagine, this loop is spinning around very, very fast and it's moving around so fast that if I press the button, I don't have time to get my finger off the button before it's read the value of the button again. Now that means that the LED will be turned on, the pin will go high, but because my button, I've still got my finger on the button, it may be held high and sent high a number of times. Obviously that doesn't cause a problem because the LED is just going to stay lit until I take my finger off the button here. So in that circumstance, the button doesn't need any debounce code because the button bouncing doesn't cause an issue. However, 
if now we come down to button two, if you look up at the serial monitor, what I'm going to do is press the button as fast as I possibly can. So a very quick sort of on off. There you go. That's the quickest I can do it. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six presses. It recorded six button presses. Now, the issue with that is that if I was using that as a counter, instead of recording one press, I've recorded six presses. So this is the sort of situation where debouncing a button comes into play, because what we want to do is set it in such a way that when I press the button, I only record one press. So we're going to get skip straight on to our first sketch that shows how simple way of debouncing the button. Now, before we get into this sketch, I should mention that obviously you can actually debounce a button using hardware. You can add a few electronic components around your switch. But if you're like me, I just prefer to keep the wiring as simple as possible. So I prefer to do my debouncing in software. Now, there are even some libraries that you can use that can help you with debouncing buttons. But the sketch we're going to look at today is a very, very simple way of debouncing. It uses the millis function as a timer. Now, if you struggle with um, that idea of using millis, there is actually a link up here in the sketch to a uh, page on the Digital Town website where I did a whole sort of tutorial on the difference between using delay and millis. So, I've removed the LED because there's nothing to be seen anymore. We've got the two buttons. I've declared an unsigned long for button debounce. This is going to be our sort of timekeeper. Again, we have to use an unsigned long because the numbers will get very big. And then I've got an integer here for button debounce sensitivity. Now, I've put a value in there of 220, which is going to be the equivalent of 220 milliseconds or 0.22 of a second. You can change that value depending as you see fit. But here are the issues. If you set the value too high, the system will become very slow and unresponsive. If you set it too low, it's easier to get multiple presses. So again, started the serial monitor, set our pin modes for the pins. And again, we go down to the main loop and I've got the two functions instead of the uh, the if statement I had before where button two uh, printed out its uh, value and millis, I've repeated the code so it does exactly the same for button one because obviously as we saw with the LED it's not affected by debounce. Now here is the simple bit of code that we add. So what we're saying is if the value of millis is greater than the value of button debounce, then if you can imagine we our code is going around in a loop, so then it's saying if that state has arrived, then check the buttons. But if that status hasn't arrived, don't bother checking the buttons. So if it's time, if 0.22 of a second has gone by, it resets the button debounce value by taking the value of millis and adding 220 to it so that'll take it uh, 0.22 of a second into the future and then what it does is it takes the value of button one and sees as it pressed and then it checks the button value of button two so if I press button one quickly as you can see now I'm pressing it once and again and again I only get a single value recorded doing the same with button two and as long as I don't press it, for, hold the button down for too long, it'll be fine. Now I'm going to press button one and we're going to hold it down. And as you can see, you still get multiple readings. Now, there's not a lot you can do about this in a very simple system. There are ways, obviously, that we could record that the button has been pressed and we don't allow anything to happen until it's been unpressed. Again, that's a more complicated version of debouncing. But at the moment, I'm assuming that you want to do this very simply. So what we're really trying to say is 
are they pressing the button reasonably quick so again if I press button 2 as long as I do it within the 0.22 of a second I will only get the one value coming through so that is a very very simple method of debouncing a button now you might say why are we using millis couldn't I just put a delay in there and actually I could put a delay in there but we have to think about a bigger program usually when you're writing a program the buttons are doing something so if I use delay the entire program will shut down until that 0.22 of a second has gone by so by using millis if we've got other things going on in the background other sensors that are reporting into our Arduino all of those can continue to function as normal and the whole millis system means that our buttons are debounced without having any impact on the rest of our code. Now I'm going to show you a final sketch because I'm not a great fan of having everything in the main loop. So the next sketch is just a quick version of this but everything put into a nice function. So this is our third sketch. Again I've brought the LED back. Apart from that everything is virtually the same. Obviously I've had to declare the pin mode for that LED pin. But you'll notice now when we go down to the loop it just calls a function button press. And the reason I do this, I'm from sort of old world uh, computer programming where it, when I started you know you had to uh, write an assembler for the computers I was doing. And what we used to do was create a function in the main loop for keyboard presses. We would then have another one for the mouse and various other bits. So it's a way of keeping the code tidy. So this function button press, it does basically what we did before. I've added the LED on and off because I'm trying to give an example here of how you would actually use this in a real world situation. So we're not just debouncing buttons for the sake of debouncing them. We want them to do something else. So if the button one is pressed, it's going to print out something to the serial monitor but it's also going to turn the LED on and if the button is not pressed it will turn the LED off again button 2 it's just doing a serial print but if you had eight or nine buttons you could literally keep copying this just changing the button numbers and obviously adding your extra pins in and you then create for yourself a whole section of button processing. Now once you start to have a lot of buttons what you might do is if it's pressed you would call a separate function here for what happens when button 1 is pressed, what happens when button 2 is pressed. But the idea here is to take the debounce into its own little function so that it doesn't interfere with anything else and it keeps the code clear. So that's the basic lesson for today. It's a very, very simple lesson on how to debounce um, with a minimal amount of work and a minimal amount of change to your code. By using millis, it means that if you're trying to join two sketches together, you're not going to start uh, wrecking the other sketch with delays and things on your first sketch. So I hope that's been helpful for you today. And again, if you do like it, um, if you can click the like and subscribe, it helps my ratings on YouTube. So thanks very much.